ho, what do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. Hi, kids. Welcome to the Big Daddy G Show. And uh, today we are doing the third episode of the Billy Meyer uh, documentary. And um, we don't have a lot of time today, but I am going to make that announcement that I promised to make last week. But little did we know. Uh, I need to sip. Hold on a second. Mm. Little did we know that uh, last week on Tuesday was the 4th of July. So happy 4th of July. Their background uh, research. Late, everybody. Uh, we had a, I had a great time. Anyway, um, today's show is, again, we're, it's the third episode of the Billy Meyer and uh, UFO uh, phenomena. So um, I've got some stuff that I wanted to uh, mention to you guys and uh, about uh, UFOs and uh, do they exist, do they not exist. And here's a couple of things that I wanted to um, you know, bring up to you guys. <clears throat> President Truman had formed a group of guys back in, the, in 1950. Uh, they called them the Majestic 12, and their job was to interview or in, investigate UFOs. And um, so that was on November 21st, 1950. This is what they wrote to President Truman. This matter is, this is number A. This is uh, declassified. This matter is the most classified subject in the United States, higher even than the H-bomb. B, flying saucers do exist. C, there are motorized apparatus that are unknown, but are being um, back engineered, which means that they're, they're taking the machine, breaking it down, breaking it down, bringing it down to see how it works. And you'll never guess who was the head of that group that was doing the, uh, the back engineering. A guy by the name of Bush. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. Well, anyway, so now we forward to uh, President Eisenhower. Okay. So President Eisenhower, he wanted to see Area 51 and another area that's called S4 that a lot of people still to this day have never heard about. So Area 51 and S4, uh, President Eisenhower wanted to know about it, and he was told that he could not go visit. He was told that under, any, under no circumstances was he allowed on any of those two bases. Uh, they're known as Area 51 and S4. <clears throat> so President Eisenhower, he threatened to send in the first army, and all of a sudden... The guys running Area 51 and S4 said, oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh, this is what we'll do. We'll allow you to send three uh, people with the highest security, and we will show them uh, the bases. And then they can go back and they can tell you, you know, what they saw. So um, they, went back, they, they went and they saw, and they saw the two bases, and they brought the information back. Uh, to President Eisenhower as to what was going on there. And they told President Eisenhower that the UFO at Roswell was real, that it really did exist, it really did happen, and that they were back engineering that UFO uh, apparatus, the motor of it, so that they can figure out how to, how to do it. And if you guys remember, um, if you've ever seen this, the farewell speech the, to the American people by uh, President Eisenhower, he mentioned uh, that uh, the, to beware of the military, uh, the military uh, industrial complex, to be very, very uh, aware of them because they had uh, in the future would he was worried that they were going to take over uh, the United States. So. Um, that particular group, if I remember correctly, is uh, pronounced by Cobal, uh, I believe it's C-O-B-A-L, that particular group, you can Google this, and uh, that group is, um, is a group of people that, according to Bill Clinton, when he was president, he was asked about the government, and Bill Clinton said, um, the government is secretly being run by another undercover government by the name of Cobal. So uh, that should be a little eye-opening for you. 
And, um, you know, the, the fact that a president has said that, President Jimmy Carter also has said that he has witnessed UFOs. So what's coming? What are they doing? According to um, all the brains on the planet, the United States, you know, again, has been at war for 222 years, I believe. Um, of all the time that they've been uh, around, they've been at war, or we have been at war, not you and me, but our tax dollars have been at war um, all over the place, and they want to take over. So the first thing, you know, um, was that they wanted to, you know, they want to take over the whole planet. So how are they going to do this? Well, first it's fear, 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 then terrorism. Oh, we got to fight terrorism. We got to fight terrorism. And then after terrorism, dude, they're going to run out of fuel. They're not going to know what to do because, you know, everybody's catching on that the terrorism, you know, uh, might be us, you know, we might be the terrorists. So their next step is going to be that we're going to be fighting aliens from another planet. So um, if you think about it, everything that been that they've been planning, that's exactly what they're doing. You know, so the next step, yeah, pretty soon you're going to be hearing about oh aliens, oh we found life in another planet. And as you, if you will, um, if you'll watch uh, uh, TV a little bit and read a little bit, you'll see that uh, they're starting to say, oh, a UFO spotted here. Oh, a UFO spotted there. Oh, a UFO here, a UFO there. And it's just a way for them to continue the, um, the fighting. And the uh, military industrial complex is uh, very, very alive by the name of Cobal. So um, we're going to show you uh, the uh, clip that we have. And then I will tell you uh, the announcement that I have for you um, at the end of this clip. So, Tarun, can we go ahead and run that clip? Awesome. In order to complete their background research, the elders visit Scotland to talk with John McVeigh, a member of the Royal Society of Astronomers and a published authority on the structure of the universe and the possibility of interstellar travel. Is it possible to travel from the Pleiades to this planet? I think the only way I, any intelligent beings and living beings could possibly reach here the inference of the sun from the uh, Pleiades uh, would be by some unconventional means, probably by hyperspace. One can use this term now a bit more freely because uh, it has kind of scientific um, mm. significance. Now. The Pleiades are very well known. In fact, they're a very ancient group. They're, they're mentioned, in fact, in the Bible, in the book of Job. I can't just give you chapter and verse, but they are, they are a very old uh, group. And they've been used by many ancient civilizations to signify the approach of, of autumn, winter. Hippocrates recorded that summer begins with their rising and winter with their setting. And Greek temples are aligned to these events. The great pyramids of Egypt are also aligned to the Pleiades. To some African nations, they are known as the Seven Goddesses. In China, they are called the Seven Maidens, and they are the seven beneficent spirits of the Hindu Vedas. Curiously, in all these separate cultures, they are always referred to in the female. The Pleiadians told Maya they used females for their first contacts because they appeared less aggressive to early man. The Mayans celebrated the moment when the Pleiades reached their zenith as the most important event in their calendar. Pre-Incan peoples believed their gods came down from the Pleiades. And on the mysterious plains of Nazca, Peru, the Thunderbird marks the plaza of the Pleiades. In other cultures, the cluster is regarded as the place of God's house, the center of heaven. The law of American Indian tribes is full of the Pleiades, which, according to some, stand at the gates of heaven. Historian John M. Hula, a Kiowa Indian, relates one story that survives to this day. It is tied to Devil's Tower in Wyoming. This mountain here, Kiowas lived in this area, and we call it the Old Tai, Old Tai. 
Kiowas camped through here, winter camp. And these children were playing. They were playing and they were running along this ledge over here. A giant bear came out of the woods and chased these children. The seven children, seven, seven sisters, we call them. And they came to this one ledge here. And the children got on top of it. This ledge began to grow. It grew out of the ground. As the mountain grew, the bear's claws were scratched in the mountain. And that's what we see today is the grooves up there. And from there, the seven sisters went on up into the sky. And they're up there today. Concerning the Pleiades, they're about 500 light years away from our planet. What would you estimate the time in this form of travel? Well, we're talking about uh, on the order of eight, eight hour transit times between the, wow. the Earth and the, and the system such as the Pleiades star cluster. Mm -hmm. wow. According to Maya, the Pleiadians make the trip in something over seven hours. Maya also says that the Pleiadian beam ship's use of the magnetic field of the Earth is something our scientists are close to being able to accomplish as well. Above everything stands one force alone. We call it the creation. It regulates the laws overall, the life and death of everything in the universe because it is everything in the universe. Real spirituality comes from the understanding of the laws of nature, the natural working of cause and effect, each contributing to and sharing with all. When you indulge in ritual and ceremony, real spirit pines away until it is gone. A spiritually developed being acknowledges creation in all things, from the largest to the smallest. Following this way, fears and doubts vanish like rain before the sun. You have whole organizations which investigate our beam ships, but they have little material which is really authentic. However, the authorities already know much about our existence, but they continue to deny the fact of our existence or even the fact of their research. They want only to rule the cosmos, but they are not even able to create on Earth peace among themselves. Many of those who come seek answers, assurance, even the promise that someone or something will save us. If we want peace and knowledge, and law and everything here on earth. We have to change everything by ourselves as human beings from this earth. It is especially hard on the children. With the publicity, security measures have tightened up. The children are taken to and from school, and their activities around the farm restricted. Most vestiges of a normal life have disappeared. But when a threat does appear, it is not from assassins or kidnappers, but a wholly unexpected source. One night, the household is awakened by a brilliant light that bathes the whole area in an eerie glow. Maya, disturbed because he has had no telepathic indications, grabs his gun and his camera. The light changes shape and intensity. It moves out over the valley, illuminating the valley floor, rising and falling until dawn, then disappears. At his next contact, Maya asks Samyasi about the phenomenon. She has no explanation. The Pleiadians do not know what the strange lights could have been. Maya is shaken. You know, everything is going on more and more difficult. I get trouble. I get trouble here in Shmidruti. I get trouble with the government, with the people around us. I can understand yeah. this, Billy. It, it's not unique. 
anybody that has an experience runs into problems. But the experience is unique. You, you've got to keep yeah, going here. Yeah, and that's true. But, you know, there come some people here from the morning to the evening. Too many of them, all of them want to talk with me. I get trouble with them because I say no. There is some other people who likes to kill me, who likes to kidnap uh, the children. I know it's got to be very hard on you, Billy, but we've got to go on. Yeah, that's to say very easy for you, now, but not for me. I put a lot of time in this. We've taken uh -huh. your pictures back, we've tested them, we've tested the metal, we've tested the sounds. They all test good. You've got the best evidence that we have in any case, and I've been at this for 20 years. Yeah. And we can't stop. And what you find out, all of it? Is it now true, or is it... Well, just... we're uh -huh. finding evidence that tends to support the case. It looks like it's really happening. Now, you have your own truth. And you know what's happening, but we've got to demonstrate this to ourselves and to the rest of the people. Please give it some serious thought. I need you. Yeah, that's true, but just now I don't know what I shall do, you know. I'm down. My nerves are flying crazy. Mm -hmm. My mind slowly, slowly is turning over. Can, uh... I have to think over about it. Please give it some serious thought, Billy. We, we, we can't stop now. We, we don't have any other way to go. But I think the world needs to know. I think you feel that the world needs to know, but you just don't want to be the one. Somebody has to be. I know, but I have to think over about it. I don't know. Just now, I don't know. An incident occurs that will reaffirm Meyer's faith and give him the inspiration to go on. Stevens forwards a letter he received from a woman who had been seeing her daughter off at the Zurich airport. She shot several pictures, the usual departure shots, ending with a shot of the plane taking off. When it was developed, an object she had not noticed in the viewfinder of the camera had been captured on film. From the configuration, Meyer recognizes it as one of the Pleiadian beam ships. Now he knows he is neither insane nor alone. For myself, I don't worry. I know the people over all the world calls me sometimes foolish. But too, there is some other people who is thinking a little bit. There is other people who is thinking a much. And then I don't worry if some of them calls me foolish or mad. Then I think it's very necessary to fulfill my mission and I don't care about my health, I don't can care about my life. If I have to lose my health or my life in fulfilling of my mission, then I have it to do. The investigators are anxious to release their findings. Meyer realizes this will expose the group at the farm to even greater pressures. He puts the issue to them, emphasizing that with wider publicity they can expect even further disruptions in their lives. But the others too feel it is time. They will do what they can. Why here? Why in this tiny, quiet, ordered country known till now for clocks and cheese? A banking centre, aggressively neutral, a winter and summer resort. Nothing about Switzerland seems to indicate the choice. Except, Maya is here. Pleiadians told me if I like, I can go with them to the Pleiadians, to stay there, to spend my life there. But the Earth, it's a very lovely and nice planet. And the humans here on Earth, they are not better and not better than on a other planet. My hopes and my dreams, they are very simple. To bring love and 
peace and the fulfilling of all the natural and creation laws over all the world. Thank you for all your help and cooperation. Don't mention about all that. Thanks for working with us. Everything. If we've given you a bad time, we apologize, but that's strictly been for the sake of the investigation, okay? Mm, I hope you'll go home to work, everything. Uh, we're we're going to look into it good. Yeah. We'll let you know. Mm. Well, we'll okay. see you later. Bye-bye, Britt. Good journey. Bye-bye, Tom. See you again. Good flight. <laughs> so, Cheers, Billy. Yeah, bye-bye. Kelly, it's been a pleasure. Bye-bye, Lee. Yeah. Uh, Please, just a moment. They still come. They are working here together with us. If they don't leave so early, they will stay here for the next couple of years. So, they are among us now, watching. Perhaps waiting for us to join them. Hi, kids. Hold on a second. Mm. All right. Again, we don't have a whole bunch of time. We have about seven minutes left, and I got a lot of stuff that I wanted to cover with you. First, um, I received a bunch of emails uh, wanting people, or people wanted me to show the alien that I encountered. And here is the alien that I encountered in my home. About, um, I'm going to say 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, something like that. About 12 years ago. That's the alien. And it just, just kind of hung there just like that. All right. So <clears throat> to cover a couple of things, every, uh, every engineer that's ever, you know, uh, that I've watched on YouTube and read about has said that there's no way the Egyptians could have built the pyramids. They've even just recently found out uh, through uh, carbon dating that the pyramids were built way thousands of years before the Egyptians got there. A couple of things that people don't know. Um, well, I'm not sure uh, if this was mentioned in the documentary. I don't remember. But uh, Billy Meyer, if you notice, he had lost an arm. And if I remember correctly, it was in a tractor accident. And they had asked him, the aliens that were visiting, the Palladians had asked him if they, he wanted to grow the arm back, that they could do that for him, that they had that technology. And he said no, that he didn't want that done because if he did that, then they would take him and put him in some lab somewhere and experiment on him for the rest of his life. So he didn't want that done. Well, come to today, now you got to remember this was back in 75, 1975, and then today, now what they're doing is um, they have the capability of growing an arm again. Uh, what they've done is they've taken, because our DNA is partly reptile, they have taken the, uh, or they've gotten the ability to grow arms back uh, by using uh, the, the, uh, they take uh, lizards, you know how lizards, when they cut their tail off or their tail gets cut off or whatever, they grow another one. They have that technology now that they've, uh, that they've, they've got that now. So just so you know. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you was that there's pyramids all over the planet. Okay. And from all the research that I've done and all, I mean, all the reading and the YouTube videos and, um, and WikiLeaks, everywhere that I've gone, um, I've come up with this conclusion that the pyramids, there's pyram three pyramids all over the planet. There, I mean, there is even some underwater. Now, these pyramids all put out a frequency. What is this frequency for? Okay, so the frequency um, is supposed to be to be able to keep aliens from coming here. And what that frequency does is it doesn't allow the uh, the UFO to come to uh, Earth. And what it does is it throws them off, you know, because it, the frequency causes a magnetic field and it throws the uh, their ships off. Well, now, you know, they have the technology to be able to come here. Um, so, you know, there you have it. Um, now... Um, how is uh, the Ice Age, remember the Mayan calendar, uh, the Mayan calendar said that every 6,500 years, 
uh, the earth will freeze. Um, and supposedly that was supposed to happen a few years ago, and it didn't happen. Well, you know, thank God that our government never lies to us. So anyway, I did a little, um, I have a little uh, figure here that I drew, and I'm sorry I'm not an artist, but um, supposedly this is what's supposed to happen. Um, there's, there's uh, if you remember, some of you don't believe in chemtrails, uh, but all of a sudden they're spraying us with these chemtrails, and the chem chemtrails are uh, hiding what's going on above us. So what's going on above us that they don't want us to see, you know, um, who knows? But according to the Mayans, a planet, uh, I believe it's called Nervous, is supposed to be coming towards Earth. And as it's coming towards Earth, it's going to draw, uh, it's going to push the Earth and it's going to take it off its axis. And so what's going to happen is that the Earth, here's here's my my little drawing. I don't know which camera you want, Tyrone. Um, I'm kind of springing this on you, but that's the planet Earth there. And, of course, that's the great state of Texas. I don't know if there's any other countries or continents or anything, but there's the great state of Texas right there. So, anyway, this planet, uh, Nervous, Nerbius, I can't pronounce it right, but anyway, um, it's supposed to come towards Earth. And what's going to happen is the Earth is going to turn on its axis. So, it'll go like this. And pretend that the sun is over here. Here, my watch will be the sun. Sun. Ah. So what's going to happen is that it's going to melt um, all of the ice from the South Pole. So it melts all the ice. The ice melts. The earth uh, gets covered in water. Remember, the Grand Canyon was completely covered. Uh, and as time went on, the water receded. So the earth is going to go sideways the sun will melt all the all the uh, ice the whole earth becomes a big ice planet okay and that's why people uh, thousands of years ago moved north and uh, that's why we have Eskimos okay uh, people that learned how to live in the snow and people say well, why the why do they live in the snow are they crazy well that's all they know so that's why they live in the snow so eventually the planet will come back to normal and then the ice will melt, and then everything will go back to normal. And remember, we can freeze stuff, and, and when it gets thawed, it comes back to life. Not every being, but a lot of beings do. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you is facts, uh, information that I got, and stuff that makes sense. Uh, so if it makes sense to you, then please read up on it. Uh, please read more about it. Um, because something big is going to happen pretty soon. And we want you guys to be aware. I'm not trying to scare nobody. I'm just trying to tell you what I have read and what I have, you know, of all the research that I've done as to what's going to happen so that you're prepared. This is our 40th episode. Uh, so thank you, Tyrone Demetrius Smith and CJ and Tori's in the studio today. Um, and I want to thank everybody that's helped us in the past. And one last thing. Viva México! <laughs> okay, so a lot of you wonder why I stand there, you know, still completely like that. And the reason I do that is because we uh, have a tendency to sometimes extend the show and then we put it on YouTube so that people can see it. But we only have 28 minutes and 30 seconds of actual live time uh, on TV. So uh, pretty soon, I believe it's in September, we're going to be going to uh, the big studio. In S September what, Tarun? September 5th, we'll be going into a bigger studio. We'll have uh, three cameras, three camera operators. Um, so it's a, a lot bigger, bigger production. And uh, we have some really cool furniture that we're going to be having as uh, our, on our set. So please stay tuned. Uh, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm just trying to tell you uh, what makes sense to me. Uh, the fact that uh, a guy named Bush was the head of the, uh, uh, the group of the people that were trying to figure out how that UFO that hit Roswell 
um, works kind of makes you think, hmm. Then all of a sudden we got a Bush and the CIA, the head of CIA. Then we got a Bush who's a president, then another Bush who's a president. And it kind of makes you think, you know. But one thing that, that really... Um, that really concerns me uh, or makes me think is that the fact that Bill Clinton said there is another government, a shadow government, running the government. So um, basically what he was saying is we have no control uh, over our government because there's another hidden government running the government. And if anything that I've said makes any sense to you, and if it doesn't, look it up, you know. Uh, put the video game down for a couple of hours and and do some research and read a book and you know and and just you know get informed you know um, stop listening to a bunch of the media a bunch of the media is going to tell you what's what they know is going to sell uh, advertisement you know uh, so you know do some research for yourself go to the library you know get on the internet um, try to stay off Google. If you can, um, because Google, you know, is owned by the same people that own YouTube. So, you know, there's a that's a whole nother show right there. So anyway, that's all I got. Um, thank you again for watching. And uh, again, this is our 40th episode. And please continue watching because uh, we might got some really cool stuff. We went to Franklin's Barbecue, and I'm going to tell you the truth. Is it worth five and a half hours to wait in line? Um, you can find out because we did shoot a segment there at Franklin's. So stay tuned. And uh, again, Viva Mexico. What do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show. Can we all just get up on the Big Daddy G Show? Yeah, man. <laughs> Why clean your room when you can do some shrooms? The Big Daddy G Show. I hope. What do you know? The Big Daddy G Show. The Big Daddy G Show.